no more ultramarathon. I got two pairs of new trainers. I'm 17 weeks out from my first 70.3 triathlon and there have been some big learnings this week. So let's dive straight into a full week of training. Welcome guys to another video. This week is a full week of training as a hybrid style athlete. So that's mixing strength and endurance all within a week. Now this week has been a really good week. I've been really happy with how I've been able to perform throughout the week. I shuffled a couple of things around because it was my birthday on Monday. So that kind of did actually mess up a little bit of recovery through the week. So I was doing sessions back to back, which I probably shouldn't have. But overall, it was a really good week and I'm feeling really strong and I'm buzzing to kind of go into next week with a couple of learnings that I've taken from this week to ensure that next week is better than this week. So Monday kicked off nice and early as was my birthday. I turned 35 and I wanted to get my training done and dusted first thing in the morning so that I had the rest of the day to kind of do with what I wanted and spend some time with the family. So let's jump in and see how that session went. So that was a really good workout. So I'm 17 weeks out from my first 70.3 triathlon. Really looking forward to that and really looking forward to like specializing into triathlon for a period and obviously still some lifting. So as I've already mentioned already, the ultra marathon is now off the cards. So that means I can put more of my focus into the actual running distance of a half Ironman, which will then in turn help me recover better because I'm not overrunning. So today's workout, five rounds of four minutes 30 at FTP. So that was me sitting at 250 watts and then three minutes 30 at 130 watts. So that's around that 55% of FTP. Uh, total workout time is about 55 minutes, so nice in and out. Gonna go out for a race pace run now off the bike just for 20 minutes. So I'm gonna be look to be running around that 5.30 to 5.47-ish pace. So I'm gonna finish up here and I'll bring you guys along for the run. Let's go. So just over halfway through my run off the bike, feeling pretty good. Definitely gone out a little bit too hot. I was supposed to be aiming for 537 to 547. Currently running at a 510 pace. I think because I knew it was only a 20 minute run, I've just gone out way too hot. But Really enjoying these new trainers. I've got, got these Brooks, I can't remember the name, but I'll put a link on the screen. But they feel well comfy for a flat foot that's quite wide. These are spot on. Anyway, I'm gonna finish this run. Catch you guys later. So there we have it, run off the bike done, 20 minutes um, at a 5.12 pace per kilometer, hit 3.85k total, <sighs> ran way too hard at 5 minutes 12 per kilometer, should have been 5.37 slash 5.47, but here's what it is, I don't know whether it's because of the new shoes and I was just excited to wear them, so they're the Brooks Ghost, I think 15s or something like that but the wide ones, and that's the key, because I bought some and I realized they weren't the wide ones, so thankfully I hadn't taken them out yet, so I could then send them back. But these ones fit like a dream. So if you have flat feet or wide feet, oh, nearly slipped down the ice, really, really recommend them. Um, anyway, so run done, bike done. Now time to jump in the ice bath, which will definitely be icy today because the cover was icy. So that water is going to be Baltic. So we'll see. Anyway, I'll catch you in the tub. Oh, that was very cold. 
So Tuesday was a strong day. And for me, running is one of those things I'm really enjoying as I'm progressing and kind of feeling a little bit more comfortable doing. So I'm really looking forward to these sessions. And the Tuesday session just was a really good one. It was fairly intense, but I made sure I kicked off with a solid warm up. So I just did a little bit of rolling out of my feet on a little foot massager, just to like massage my feet out because they were just feeling a little bit tight from the day before's run. And I went into the gym and got myself into some dynamic run specific warm up drills, which included some things like some single leg hops, some double hops, some lateral hops, some lunges, mainly going lateral to get a nice deep stretch in that inner thigh. So help stretch out that abductor, some ankle pulls as well, where I grab my ankle and kind of give it a pull up to get a nice little stretch into my outer glute, some lateral leg swings, some front leg swings, some squats, and some tiptoe walks to really help get those calves firing. And then I headed out for some run intervals and they're all supposed to be around that four minutes 15 to four minutes 30 per kilometer pace. So let's see what I have to say there. So just come into the end of my warm-up, uh, 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna get into nine rounds of two minutes on at fast pace, and then some recovery time, which I can't remember. But um, what was interesting, listening to music in my warm-up, I was running way too hard, too much. So my warm-up, I was supposed to keep my heart rate quite low, but because I was listening to music, and going to the beat of the music, it's running way too fast. Not listening to my breathing, not listen to my cadence. So yeah, lesson learned for next time. Save it up for the workout. Right, just get into the park to do my intervals. And I'll catch you after the first one. Oh, so interval one done. So it's two minutes around 4.15 to 4.30 pace, followed by a two minute jog or easy jog or walk. So can't just walk in so I can ease into these nine rounds. First one felt all right though, but one of nine would always feel good. I'll check back on you at the halfway point. Let's do it. Oh, so four rounds in, feeling pretty good. Obviously went out a bit hot after the first one at like 4.15, 4.20. So I went at the top end of my bracket, but I'm now averaging around a 4.30, 4.35, well, 4.35 and below, which was the latter end of my target pace today. So round four done, gonna get back to some slow jogging and then I've got five more to get done. And just like that, round nine, here we come. Feeling pretty strong, feeling pretty good. Best I've ever felt running at speed. I think the biggest game changer I've had is shortening my stride. I just get a lot less stress going through my joints, especially as a bigger runner. Ooh, but feeling really good, really happy. Anyway, one more to go, I've got 50 more seconds. <sighs> then a little jog home and then time to recover probably a little ice bath as well see this pretty gold last one let's do it oh yeah Woo -hoo. so absolutely buzzing with that workout a really strong feeling workout 
nine rounds at that four minutes 15 to 435 pace and i managed to keep them all in that window which i'm buzzing with and then a two minute easy jog or walk i mainly walked in between a few and then i'd start to jog maybe in the second minute but i wanted to let my heart rate come down as fast as possible so that i could kind of have the highs and the lows in my intervals so really really happy with how today went so i'll put these splits up here so you guys can see but really happy with how consistent i was across the board especially scenes this is now me just getting back into some intervals from doing a fair amount of steady work so i'll put the workout up on the screen here as i mentioned those intervals i was supposed to get my heart rate up to around zone five and i didn't actually get my heart rate into zone five at all so it means i could have pushed harder now these numbers that I was aiming to hit were based off of a 10k that I'd done a little while ago. So I may need to redo a lactate threshold test and kind of get some new parameters to start to work off so that I can be more accurate and precise with the work that I need to put in based on my current fitness levels. Wednesday was a really strong steady bike session. So this session saw me doing six lots of three minutes at a low cadence, three minutes at a high cadence, three minutes at a low cadence but at a higher output and then three minutes at an easy recovery pace now because this was done before my clients in the city i kind of underestimated the amount of time that i would need even though i knew the session was 80 minutes long i faffed around in the morning and kind of dragged out things a little bit too long which then meant rather than dropping any of the intervals or not doing them what i decided to do was drop some of the rests so i could still get all the work done but get myself into my cold plunge and then get myself into the city all before half past seven. Let's dive into that session and see how I felt. Whew. Now that was a good session, a little bit longer than I initially thought because I had to move some sessions around because my birthday on Monday and I didn't really have enough time to do a nine minute session before going into the city, but it just meant I cut my rest periods down. So today's work anyway, it's up on the screen here. I had three minutes 85% of my FTP at like a low cadence, three minutes at a high cadence, so that was aiming for 100 RPM or more, and then three minutes at a low cadence, but around 92% of my FTP, so that got hard. Uh, then a three minutes recovery at 50% of my top effort, which is in 115 watts. Oh. So cutting the rests definitely did make it a little bit more challenging for me. But as I said, I've got to get quite a bit in before I get into the city. So I thought as long as I get the main work done first, that's the stuff that really counts. The recovery is the recovery. Whew. So just spinning the legs out for an easy three minutes now. I'm going to jump in the cold tub, spend three minutes there and go to shower and get myself ready to go to the city but really good steady bike session today feeling good so another solid session getting closer to my first half Ironman buzzing anyway catch you guys later so after my morning clients I like to get my lower body work in because I'm in a city and I have access to a sled I like to make sure I get my lower body work done on a Wednesday so I can really get the most out of the equipment I have access to so it started out with building to a heavy single squat, which for me on the day was 200 kilos. I forgot my belt and my knee sleeves. So that was actually one of the heaviest squats I've done without knee sleeves and a belt in, I can't tell you how long it's been since I've squatted without knee sleeves or a belt. And now that I've got this heavy single, I'm gonna work off some percentages in the next couple of weeks to kind of work off, to kind of give myself a good chance at maintaining as much strength as possible in my big three compound lifts. So after my squats, I got myself into some accessories. So I went for three sets of six to eight single leg deadlifts on each leg. These are feeling pretty good. I didn't want to go too heavy, but I was really getting a good connection with these at this weight. So I will look to increase the weight next week. And I paired these with some calf raises. Now with these calf raises, I went for a set of 10 on each leg. And on the last rep, what I did, I held the top position for five seconds 
I held just before the halfway point for five seconds and I held the stretch for five seconds just to get a different type of stimulus going through my calves in different ranges. Once I went through my three rounds there, I moved into another three rounds of some knee over toe split squats with a barbell where I had my front foot elevated. Here, I was really focusing on getting my knee as far over my toe as possible while maintaining a really tall torso and trying to keep my back leg as long as possible also. And once I got through the eight to 10 reps on each leg there, I got myself into some tib raises where I'm looking at pulling my toes to my knees. This is actually something I quite struggle with. So I'm still actually quite upright. As I get stronger with these, I'd look to be moving my feet further away to increase the stress in that position. And then to finish off with, I moved into the sled. That for me is the main thing after the squat that I really wanna nail. And I went for three rounds of 60 meters of backwards dragging and then pushing. And I'll have about 60 to 90 seconds rest in between those 60 meter blocks. And then once I went through those three rounds, I then went laterally. So I decided to take some steps sideways to really help get into that outer glute area and challenge my legs up in a different plane. Now, Thursday, I was a little push for time because I was on daddy duty because the missus was going out for a work event. So that meant I got my recovery cycle done first thing in the morning to help flush out the legs from the lower body day the day before. So that was just an hour at around zone one and two. So really nothing crazy, just spinning those legs, keeping a relatively high cadence. I'll put the session up here. And then after my morning clients that I had, I had a quick 45 minute window to get an upper body session in, which was plenty of time to get my work done. Now this upper body session was just like last week's session. So if you haven't seen that video, you can click the link here and it will take you to how I break down that full session. But in today's session, I built up to a heavy single at the bench press and that was 140 kilos for the day, which I was pretty happy with, especially because it was only about a month ago that I hit 145 in competition. So it's not too bad, especially because this wasn't a max out rep. And then I followed that up as I'd normally do my three rounds of max reps on chin ups and dips. And I was buzzing because this week saw me get four extra chin ups across the three rounds. And I got three extra dips across the three rounds also. So my first kind of little benchmark goals is I'm looking to hit three sets of 12 on the chin ups and I'm looking to build to three sets of 20 on the dips. I'm currently at 12, 11, eight on the chin ups and 16, 15 and 12 reps on the dips. So as you can see, my muscle endurance isn't quite where it should be for my strength, but I'm really happy with how things are progressing because to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever done three sets of 12 chin-ups ever. So I'm feeling really good in this position. But if you wanna see the rest of my upper body session, you can see what it looks like. If you click the last video that I uploaded, I'll put a link at the top of the screen. There you can see exactly what I do in a full upper body session as I'm prepping myself for these half Ironmans. Now, Friday was my swim day. This got moved for my Monday because I normally swim on a Monday or a Tuesday, kind of day dependent. That got switched to the end of the week. And to be honest with you, it went really good. Let's catch me in the car before I got into the pool. Okay, so I've just got to the pool. Really looking forward to this. It's actually my first swim of the week. So I'm only gonna be able to get in one swim this week rather than the two that I generally plan to try and get. Um, I've got a thousand meters on the car today, so I've got a bit of a warm up, then I've got some hundred meter intervals, and I've got some 200 meter intervals, I think, if I'm rightly remembering. Um, but yeah, so looking forward to this. Hopefully, like what I'm finding is whenever I go swimming, I get really congested that evening and it probably lasts for about a day or two. So it really puts me off swimming because then it impacts my recovery, which then impacts my training. So I'm in this catch 22 of like, I need to swim because I need to be better. But every time I swim, I then can't breathe afterwards. I've tried a nose clip. That kind of helps, but then my breathing is all over the shop. So anyway, I'm going to give it a go today. See how I can go without a nose clip, but with earplugs and uh, yeah, go from there. But I'll catch you guys after the swim. Let's go. Done. So the swim was really good and probably because it was only a thousand meters. But for me, swimming is a huge weakness of mine and I'm really looking at nailing it in this prep. However, I do have to weigh up recovery because whenever I go swimming, I always get really congested. Now, when I'm congested, I then don't sleep as well because I can't breathe. So then it means my recovery is impaired. So I have to weigh up the thing of 
recovering from sleep or practicing swimming. So I want to build it up to two sessions a week, but I do have to weigh up that thing of recovering in between the sessions. Now I currently take Sudafed as a spray to help me get some relief. But I mean, that's not ideal for whenever I go swimming all the time, it burns. And I just don't think I should be doing it every time I go swimming, but I've got to do what I've got to do. I would love to hear if you guys have ever suffered with anything like that. Drop it in the comment section down below. Have you overcome that? What did you do? I have tried nose clipping. I have, I wear earplugs and I'm not breathing in through my nose. So I don't really know what's going on. And it happens in both the pool and in open water. Now these are just probably excuses to not go swimming, but I would love to know if you guys have got anything that would help me. It's because I do want to keep practicing. Anyway, let's get into the session itself. It's a strong, strong session for me. I had a 300 meter warm up, So that was either going for just a nice, easy pace. I also had some paddle work in there as well to really focus on that catch and that push. I then had 10 50 meter intervals and I had 15 second rest in between each of them. And in that 50 meters, I went out hard and then I swam back easy and I rested for 15 seconds. And I did that for the 10 rounds. I then had 100 meters of just some steady pace swimming and I rounded up the rest of the swim just with a cool down pace. Now my pacing is around a 210 to 215 in a 25 meter pool. And I found in a 50 meter pool, it's just a little bit too long till I get to rest again. So it kind of drifts down towards the two minute 30 mark which is really probably where I'm at. Now let's jump into Saturday. Saturday ended up being a rest day. It was a real family day. So it was a nice day to just spend some time with the kids and the wife. Um, I was supposed to train in the morning, but I just chose to sleep instead because my body was just feeling a little bit beaten up. And I'm glad I did because I then felt so much more recharged essentially on Sunday today. So Sunday was my brick session. Let's jump into the clips and see how I got on. So, we're 51k into a group ride. Today's session was supposed to be 100 minutes in the saddle into a brick run at race pace. And rather than just doing a loop on Zwift, I decided to join a group ride, which was 100k. So I knew I'd get my time in. I'd have varying intensities throughout, but I've been averaging around that two watts per kilo. So we're looking to sit around that 200 watt mark throughout the ride. So I'm just now easing off the throttle a bit. So I've lost the front pack, just letting the legs spin out now for the last 10 minutes. So what I'm using these weekend rides for is one, to build up time in the saddle, but also to get a better understanding of fueling. So I average one of these 30 gram precision fuels gels every half an hour. So I'm actually just about to take one now. And as well as the gels every half an hour, I sip on this drink, which was another 30 grams of carbs with a thousand milligrams of sodium. I also sip on this, which is Precision Fuels 1500 electrolyte mix. So, as you can see, I'm a bit of a sweaty mess. So I wanna make sure I'm refueling and replenishing lost electrolytes. So when I'm out on the run, I'm not cramping up. So I've got another five minutes now just to cool down. Let the legs ease off. It was a good ride. Really enjoyed today's session. Oh, but I'm even more looking forward to getting on the run. So, I'll catch you out in the run. Okay, so halfway through the run, feeling pretty good. Um, just ran up a little hill there, which just spiked my heart rate quite high. But after the first K going out a bit too hot, you think I wouldn't learn from Monday but because I live on an ever so slight downhill, when you're feeling fresh and you start on a downhill, it's really hard to hold yourself back. <sighs> but we move on. So the final part of this, that was five minute K. So the final part of this workout, making sure I'm averaging around that 5.37 pace. <laughs> so feeling pretty good, heart rate stays 
below 155, which is great, especially at a 537 pace. I'm really happy with that. So it's a bit dreary today, but it's cool enough. So I'm not overheating, which is nice. The roads are relatively empty, which is even nicer. So happy days. Anyway, I'll catch you at the end of the workout. Okay, so just like that, 30 minutes done. Uh, five and a half K down at 526 pace. So a little bit hotter than planned. And to be honest with you, I kind of felt it actually towards the end there. Um, oh, I need to get better. I don't know what happened this week. This week I've kind of just disregarded heart rate and just gone off feel and feels good, <laughs> but um, should probably kind of rein it in a little bit and listen to what I've written down to actually do. So anyway, week done i'll learn for next time but so as a whole i felt run actually went really well uh felt good felt strong hence why the faster pace but i think if i start a little bit steady i am still 17 weeks out so i do need to make sure i'm not being billy big balls and uh blowing my loads too early i want to get these i want to improve these base miles and keep pushing the needle forward rather than hurting myself and then maybe having that needle going backwards anyway a little bit of a walk home now then into the cold tub and start eating back some of these cows so as i said there it was a really strong cycle really enjoyed joining that group ride because it kind of gave me uh some paces essentially to work off to kind of keep my efforts at around that 1.8 to 2 watts per kilo which is where i was looking to kind of maintain from my race pace at the moment and then obviously going off into that run going out a little bit hot so i'll put the details of my splits up here so you can see and as you can see, I went out a little bit hot. I've been just feeling really good at the moment. And unfortunately, I didn't get to wear my nice new trainers, but that was no excuse to not get the session done. And it was a really good one. Managed to get a good pace throughout. Was a lot faster than I'd hoped for at around a 5.25 per kilometre. And I was aiming for a 5.37 to 5.47 pace, so a little bit fast. So I do think I need to recalibrate and get some new benchmarks to kind of work off of. As a session itself, it was a really strong session. I felt really good. Finished off with a cold plunge, uh, three minutes there, always get that done. It was a bit cold today, it was at five degrees, so it was pretty, pretty chilly, but I really do feel good after them. I really make sure I focus on things like my sleep. I get to bed by probably 8 p.m. every night, even when I get up at 4 a.m. the next day. I'm really focusing on my nutrition to keep that on point. I'm not boozing at the moment, and I'm not having any 0% beers either, because I do still feel a slight effect from them also not too sure what that is but it might just be the hops or something in there that's in there because again i think it really plays with my congestion and i'm just trying to moderate my volume at the moment my garmin tells me i'm pretty optimal in where i should be and everything's kind of progressing nicely so my weekly volume this week has been pretty good 17 weeks out and as i said i only had that one swim at a thousand meters so a thousand meters in the bag there i got four hours 50 on the bike all obviously on zwift and then i got an hour and 45 work of running which was just under 19k and then of course i hit my upper body session and my lower body session and the only thing that i really missed out this week was the long run because i didn't train on the saturday and i missed out my full body session so moving into next week I've, I've taken some of the learnings of kind of just like my schedule and kind of where i can fit sessions in and i've had to have a little rejig around so i'm going to kind of go through it another week to kind of see if this is the new schedule and i'll update you guys with how i'm balancing the books there because i keep kind of saying this is what the layout is but i kind of it needs to kind of free flow because of how i have clients that change and i also just have family duties that might pop up sometimes training has to change and all my training pretty much has to be done first thing in the morning. Now, addressing the ultra marathon stuff that I mentioned at the start. So unfortunately, I won't be doing the BB Ultra that I originally had planned because my mate that I was supposed to be doing it with has actually got to stay on on a music tour that he's doing. So he wasn't able to come back in time, which is fine. And the other one he's gonna be doing is actually on my daughter's birthday. So there'd be no chance of me doing that, which is fine because then what that means is I can really focus on that half Ironman distance training alongside my strength training. And I then don't need to necessarily overrun, which I was doing in previous weeks. So in terms of recovery, it's probably a blessing in disguise. So I guess I'll just save the ultra marathon for next year. 
Now shoes, these were two purchases which I was over the moon with and they've been an absolute treat this week. Well, one of them has been a treat. The other one I haven't actually tried out yet. Firstly is my new daily drivers with the running trainers. And these are the Brooks Ghost 15s in wide. And because I've got quite flat wide feet, they felt amazing. And when I have them on, I don't feel them essentially. And that's what I was feeling with my Hoka's that I got. I got a pair of Hoka Clifton 7s, uh, so they're a bit old now and I could always kind of feel them on my toes. Whereas these Brooks really kind of let my feet open up. Now I did make this mistake and actually buy the normal Brooks Ghost 15s and not the wide editions and they were really compact. So there's a big difference between the wide ones and the not wide ones, which obviously there is because that's why they sell them. So if you're a heavier, flatter footer runner, I definitely recommend those Brooks Brook Ghost wide. And then I got a birthday present of some super shoes and I got the Nike Vaporfly Freeze and they feel amazing. I've put them on, they feel great. They feel really comfortable. And all I want to do is go out and try them. So I'm going to have to take you guys on that first run probably sometime next week. But I'm buzzing to kind of give them a try because from what I've heard, they make a massive difference. But it's just all hearsay at the moment. I'm a little bit worried that a 100 kilo man with carbon plates, I might break them, but I'm sure they'll be fine. But if I do break them, I'll be sure to bring you guys along for uh, that experience, shall we say. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed this style. I really enjoyed kind of through the week, kind of taking clips of the sessions and kind of my thoughts there and then, and then kind of putting them all together for you guys at the end of the week. If you did enjoy this kind of uh, video, do drop it in the comment section down below and you know, let me know what you think. Maybe you want me to improve on certain areas because this is still me learning and trying to be consistent with YouTube. This is now, I think my 13th video that I'm putting up pretty much every week. So I'm buzzing with that. I'm also buzzing that I've kind of got some specificity now that I'm working only on the half Ironman and my strength stuff. I'm just really looking forward to bringing you guys along for the next 16 weeks and beyond. So if you did enjoy the video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed already and you want to join me on this journey, be sure to subscribe. So thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you guys next week. Boom.